Guru Nation, how's it going? Thank you so much. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. Look, I'm working 24-7 for you guys, okay? You can text me your questions, 949-415-6256. Anything goes. I'm, I'm doing this on a Sunday for you guys. So somebody texted me today. They said, hey, uh, hope you're having a great weekend. Please, I have a question. Can you please tell me some challenges that you experience as a monitor in general? And also some challenges that you're experiencing as a monitor doing COVID pandemic and remote monitoring. Thanks a lot in advance. Well, lucky for you, you, you guys may know my my the core of what I do is site site ownership, site management. But I do dabble a little bit as a contract CRA. So right now, I am and I have been throughout COVID and even before COVID, contract CRA. Albeit for two sites, but still contract CRA. And one of the sites is a big academic medical center and it's I'm doing remote monitoring because they're not even allowing me to go back in. And the other one's more traditional monitoring. I'm going every six to eight weeks back in to monitor. So some challenges of a monitor in general. I mean, these are obviously really good interview questions. By the way, there's no way to fake these interviews or memorize these answers. Don't try, if you haven't monitored, don't try to invent a challenge. Talk about challenges you've experienced in whatever it is you're doing. If you've been a coordinator, talk about challenges as a coordinator. But this is like if you have been a monitor, you know, I'm just giving you my experience of what, what's been a challenge. Uh, generally, it's a challenge to get sites to do what you need them to do. And the way to alleviate this challenge or make this challenge a little bit less of a burden for you is to actually treat your study coordinators well so help them out don't just add, just it's like my, my philosophy for everything in life don't just ask for things and keep asking for things i see a lot of cra's the way they treat their coordinators they don't talk to them until they need something and then they bug them until they get it and then they repeat this and vice for oh, constantly right on and on and on that's a good way to get ignored that's a good way to not build trust with your coordinator. As a CRA, you need to build trust with your coordinator. They need to believe that you are on their team and you are not going to throw them under the bus and you're not just going to give them extra work that they don't need. And they're not they're definitely not going to help you do your job better if you're making their job tougher. So the challenge has always been how to get the sites, how to get the coordinator to trust you, to work together with you, to be honest with you, and also how do you help the coordinator out as well? Can you be proactive? Can you show them, hey, this watch out for these potential deviations. Okay, some of my other sites have been having issues here. That's the kind of CRA sites need. With COVID, it's particularly challenging to build this trust, especially remote monitoring, especially with academic medical centers where the turnover is insane. The turnover at these academic medical centers when it comes to clinical research coordinators is bonkers, guys. I'm on my fifth coordinator. This study's been going on for three, uh, two, almost three years. I'm on my fifth coordinator. All right. There is no trust really that I'm able to build, especially when the site's not allowing me to go in person. So I got to do it remotely now, even less so, right? How many Zooms can you do to replicate that face-to-face, in-person interaction? It's just not the same. So during COVID, the challenge is getting the sites to scan the right documents, being proactive ahead of time, following up on your queries, all right? So it's one thing to know, okay, these are the, as a CRA, these are the last visits that I've monitored remotely. For my next visit, I'm going to need to request these visits. Well, you forget then about the queries. So now you need to ask, like in order to close out those queries, you need to ask for the previous source documents to be scanned again. Remember, these sites are not using eSource. And it's not an easy task, or it's not an easy ask to ask a coordinator to scan. So now I'm trying to close out previous queries. I need to ask my coordinator for all the previous data, right? They've already scanned me this once. I need it scanned again 
because my access is not 24 seven, it just expires within 24 hours. So I need to ask for these things again so I can verify the queries were answered properly so I could close them. That's a challenge. It's, it's a challenge to monitor remotely in a time of COVID uh, for that reason. That's one of the main reasons. If you ask most CRAs, they prefer in-person monitoring just because it's less things you need to ask. If you go to the site, you just tell the coordinator, bring me all the source. You don't need to ask them, hey, I need visit three for subject two, visit four, five, and six for subject seven, and then the coordinator has to go scan all these things. So in-person monitoring, definitely better in the age of non-e-source, which is most sites still not using e-source. So those are some of the challenges as a monitor in general. And then these are some of the specific challenges in times of COVID. I love you guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. If you don't know what to comment, put a robot emoji. It helps me out with the algorithm. Although some of you guys have been putting pizza emojis. Some of you guys have been putting alien emojis. I don't care. Just put an emoji that represents you best. Helps me out with the algorithm a lot. Keeps me motivated. I've been doing this for all 12 years. Let's go for another 12. I feel like I'm just starting over again with this content. So keep it coming, guys. 949-415-6256. Thank you guys so much. It means a lot to me. Take care.